Peace, oh please. It's obvious. Today we have a new guest. We have Leo Dynasty. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Welcome, man. What's up? Good, brother. So tell us a little about yourself. Um, I'm a musician from Cincinnati, Ohio, first of all. Um, just here spreading the message, bro. You know, trying to elevate humanity, do anything I can for us, you know what I mean? Through the music. Yeah. Got you. How long have you been making music for? Um, about like 10 years. Since 2000, since 2009, really. But since it's 2009. been- 2009. Yeah, but I've been like a musician kind of my whole life. I started off in the drums when I was like six or seven. You started off in the what? Uh, playing drums. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what was your favorite like uh, music that you used to li like listen to when you played drums? Uh, classical rock for sure. Like a lot of um, a lot of Guns and Roses and Queen and stuff like that. That's what I came up on. My dad was heavy into that stuff. Oh, hey, nice. That's cool. Yeah, I, I was into them too. Way back during the rock days. <laughs> yeah, bro, I love that. I still love that music now. Yeah, you you still look like, you look like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like jackets, I will say that. <laughs> so, uh, when did you get into rap? Well, um, see, that's funny, because, like, my mom, on the other side, my dad was always listening to, like, classical rock and stuff like that and my mom she was a big disco head and she was always listening to hip-hop like when I was a kid too so I always had that side and um mm. around when I was about like 13 or 14 uh one of my friends showed me um the the recession album by Young Jeezy believe it or not and oh. he, he he was older than I was and he had like a, a Mustang with like a a nice speaker system in it and he would always just bang that album really hard you know what i mean and it was the first thing that really like caught my mind on music and i was like oh i really kind of like this you know what i mean like i really kind of like rap now you know wow and, uh, that's funny yeah. yo gz i got into rap kind of because of gz too that's funny, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah yeah that's it bro that album is amazing that's what started my whole love for rap yeah wow that's awesome that yeah that's way back uh, I remember there's this one song on uh, Skate. I don't know if you ever played that video game. Skate? Uh, yeah, all yeah, three he, of them. Yeah, he had a song on there. Um, do you know which one I'm talking about? No, dude, my memory is so bad, but if you uh, probably, if you said it or sung it, I would know exactly which one it is. Like, I'd know all of GC. Yeah, dude. Uh, I, <laughs> it was with Kanye. It was with Kanye. I know that. Oh, uh put on for my put on yeah 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 that's it that's yeah, it yeah that that sounds crazy that sounds crazy <laughs> that like kind of got me into rap a little bit more <laughs> when i heard that song i was like yo this bumps yeah that's that's like what originally got me into rap but um i didn't start i don't even think i started rapping until a couple years after that to be honest like the Why story that, the yeah. story that is like my butt i i used to go to school with like uh a guy who, who who was rapping and stuff and I like was taking interest into rap music mm -hmm. and I was he was always asking me like bro I don't have nobody to make beats for or for me I don't have nobody to you know do none of that stuff I'm always like taking beats off of YouTube I was like bro I bet if I try this I could make I could make you I could get you a couple beats in like you know what I mean four to six weeks or whatever and he's like all right I'll give you six weeks like <laughs> and uh wait, I wait Yo, and that's that's the end of it. That's just where I started, and I started rapping at that same time too. Like, all right, one one second. Let me just uh, fix this real quick. Hello. Yeah, I hear you. Um... Okay. All right, wait, wait. There we go. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yep, yep. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I cannot hear you. Hello, hello, oh, hello. Here okay, there we go. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I just realized I had to plug this in. <laughs> Apology, bro. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you explain that again? <laughs> so how you got into rapping? Um, yeah. So when I was like, when I was like 15, I was going to school with a buddy who was, uh, who, who was rapping and mm -hmm. he was looking for somebody to make beats. He was, he never had anybody to make beats for him. He was always complaining to me about it. And, um, I just thought to myself, like, yo, I bet you I could make you some beats. Like, I bet I could do that. You okay. know, uh, he was like, yeah, I'll give you like four to six weeks. If you make me something cool, like I'll use it. All right. And, I, and that like lit a fire up under my ass. You know <laughs> what I mean? Okay, cool. Some rappers. Yeah. Can use and uh, I downloaded FL Studio. And at that time, like, I was a little bit more deeper into rap from when I had started listening to Jeezy. So I was listening to stuff like uh, Tupac, listening to stuff like, you know, um, the bones and stuff like that just a whole bunch of like old school hip-hop and i kind of used that as my influence to make the beats and uh i gave it to him gave him like three or four beats after i like learned how to do it and he liked them and it just yeah. ever since then bro i've made music and started rapping wow so you got into it not because of songwriting you got into it because you were you started producing yeah and so how did you get into the writing um I think like, I think my friends were pushing me because like we would we would like always like do like freestyles in the car to like over like <laughs> say Tech Nine's KOD album or something. We would always like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Smoke, like do our freestyles, and they were like, "Yo, you can actually rap! Like, duh, 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 you should actually like make a song and stuff." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no," you know. And then um, yeah, when I started making the beats and stuff. I kind of, I kind of like realized, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try it now. And it, I never quit. <laughs> yeah. And now I know you're really heavily into like writing about spiritual topics and stuff like that. Were you writing that in the beginning or? Was oh, absolutely not, dude. No, I was, yeah. I was, I could do my music was horrible at the beginning, just like anyone else's, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, bro. That's funny. I think, I think the first like thing that I recorded was, um, Oh, you remember Cottonmouth Kings? Yeah, yeah. You remember that song? Um, uh, where's the weed at? Yo, where's the weed at? <laughs> that song so did something over that. Oh, and it was okay. Super cheesy, super corny, but like we loved it. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was my first thing. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So then how did you get into the spiritual lyrics then? Bro, that all started with Tupac for real so like i got big into heavy into tupac like after i started making beats for my buddy um he started like showing me like a bunch of like Illum like the whole illuminati conspiracies and all that yeah. stuff so I, I started down that rabbit hole and you know one rabbit hole leads to another blah blah, yeah. blah. and um over the years it just kind of you know once you you have that um that that awareness that things aren't what they are yeah. truly they're not what that you've told they've been um, right, right. It, kind of that little itch in your brain you know what i mean for the rest of your mm -hmm. life that that you just need to dig to find out the truth Listen. and i always knew you know what i mean that it was something i couldn't quite put my finger on it but um yeah it, like started out with the the the, the conspiracy stuff and it just slowly started um slowly started showing its head on, on to what it really was you know right 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 and then so gradually so gradually then once you started realizing basically the nature of like how everything's all it's all it's all different it's not what you thought it was that's yeah. when you're like all right so your basically mindset was like all right like i kind of feel like this is important now let me let let everyone else know like yeah know. <laughs> definitely how i felt like i definitely felt like i needed to tell everybody you know Right, because that once you once you learn about some of the stuff that like you never would have thought like is going on, it just it definitely just shatters your whole paradigm. And if doesn't it just oh, feel man. like the most important thing? <laughs> it could be bad at first, can it? Like it could kind of be a little bit like anxious at first, and um, yeah, definitely turns your whole life upside down. And you, you said it made it it made you anxious at first. Well, yeah, I think uh, once I like figured out that everything, you know, wasn't what it was, and I really kind of got deep into it. Um, mm -hmm. Like that initial shock, you know what I mean? Of mm -hmm. everything, just a little bit overwhelming at first, if you right. know what I mean, you know? How'd you uh, get like, get over that overwhelming feeling? Just time, just time and, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about it and mm -hmm. 
Trying not to be a sponge to it. Right. Yeah. So this is basically what started your whole spiritual awakening, right? Just yeah. the whole yeah. conspiracy. Mm -hmm. stuff. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> And um, so, yeah, I uh, so do you meditate? I would like to know that. Um, Sometimes, like maybe like once a week or twice a week, but I usually I don't like do it in daily practice. I really should. I really should. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to ask you as well. Um, So were you friends with or the prophet around that time, like when you had your spiritual awakening? Um, Like when I was like 15. No, we knew about each other, but we weren't like friends until about 2016. Uh, okay yeah gotcha gotcha so how'd you guys like link up um it's crazy so like we always like knew about each other and um it came to a point to like for me to where like i was looking for people to do music with in my area mm -hmm. and i had just you know reached out to him and was like yo you trying to do some music and um he was just like, yeah. And then we met up at like a mutual buddy's house and set up our studio there. And literally ever since then, we've just clicked, you know what I mean? And just worked together. Gotcha. So when you met him and you, just, you asked him to like make music together, were you doing the spiritual lyrics at that point? Um, kind, I, Yeah, kind of. I really wasn't to the point to where I was um, knowing, the, like, like full knowing. Uh, I was... The better way to say it would be I was still kind of more into the Illuminati stuff and the conspiracy stuff at that right. point. But he was definitely on that wavelength when I met him. Yeah. So he started, you know what I mean, like kind of like the stuff that he would show me, you know what I mean, would definitely resonate and go into my mind and cause me to go look into different stuff, you know, for sure. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so also I would like to know more about your, your latest project, Oracle. Like what's, what's the main message behind it? What's the theme? The main message yeah. definitely behind that is to go back within yourself for your answers. Mm. That's the whole thing about the, the, the whole project is to, um, to not look out here for your questions and answers is to go within, you know what I mean? And trust your intuition and take your power back. Mm -hmm. It's the whole Gotcha. So what what inspired you to think of this title, Oracle, and this whole theme for your album? So it's kind of crazy. So like I've always been like a really, really big fan of the Matrix. Yeah, me too, bro. Trilogy's like favorite. Yeah. And ever since I was a kid, I never really understood why until I got older and like I woke up and I was like, oh, this is why I love this movie. And um, I kind of wanted to incorporate that into like a, like a conceptual project. Mm. So as you know, the Oracle and the Matrix. Um, yeah, yeah. I kind of, it, it, it's kind of like a double entendre on the words. Cause it's like the Oracle for like uh, seeing in the future and then the Oracle it, breaking programs. Mm you know what i mean like breaking right. your and stuff and it also kind of uh, alludes to my next album neo leo which is also part kind of part of the same conceptual project okay, okay. nice okay. i really i love that meaning i love the whole yeah story. that's awesome yeah i love the matrix bro that's uh my favorite movies of all time dude yeah definitely. i thought a homage you like the sequels too oh yeah yeah oh yeah I think it gets more deeper and deeper the more you go into it, for sure. Oh, I gotta watch the sequels. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, we just watched it last week, man, and it, it, I was coming back to it like every time I watch it, every single time you watch it, you take something different from it. Yeah, yeah. that's when you know. That's when you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know. It's deep. It's real deep. Super deep. It, it's even more deep than i can still understand at this point you know yeah, true there i mean there, yeah there's a youtube channel that has a whole it's only about the matrix like there's so many videos <laughs> and thousand videos on yeah there. literally just breaking down like everything it's crazy how much goes into this movie yeah man <laughs> how long did this how long did it take you to make this project um a better part of the year i i i, I started probably in like february of 2020 and i did like it came out in december so like yeah better part of the whole year i just wanted to make sure the right uh words and the messages were going into it you know what i mean and yeah. be able to um 
correlated with the next album that's coming out as well you know right gotcha and you produced the whole album yeah yeah oh wow that's amazing so what's like the process of like what was the process like of making the album like do you have the beats first or do you just write the lyrics so it's yeah it started like because in the beginning of the year um i had just got back into making beats while i was in i was yeah i just got back into making beats basically and uh I would just be sitting at the studio making a bunch of beats and I came across like a sound that I really liked, like a like a kind of like a sonic that I really yeah. liked that that right. correlated between multiple different beats that I was doing. And um I was like, yo, I'm gonna take these and make an album, and then the whole idea kind of came from that, you know what I mean? Mm. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Did yeah. you fix it mastered too? Um, no, Kaisco did. Oh, okay, Kiss. Kiss. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Word. Yeah. I, yeah. I listened to it and I really love the production. Like, just sounds really good. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, I love all the lyrics, dude. I love all the lyrics and the messages. It's and the production like surprised me. Like some certain like effects were like, ooh, that's that's fire. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say? My voice cut you off. I said, yeah, that's hitting right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I absolutely love it. When do you Thank think your next project is going to come out? Hopefully a couple months, but. Oh, really? I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to say because uh, you know how things go. I want it to be right, you know, so. Wow, that's fast because you just dropped Oracle. Yeah, well, I've been working on both of them in tandem. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Like, so, mm-hmm. Mm, okay. So you basically what you do is you you find a nice soundscape, a nice sound that you think will fit the album, and then you basically make everything revolve around that, basically, right? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And that was the first time I really took that artistic endeavor to do that. You know what I mean? Oh, really? You didn't usually you didn't usually like do it like that? Mm-mm, no, like mostly most of my uh, albums or EPs before were just kind of like mixtape style stuff going on, you know, bunch of different vibes and feelings going into it. Right, right, right. This is more thought out and more of a concept. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's exactly. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for the next one, bro. <laughs> yeah, me too. Do you um do you have a favorite song off Oracle? Yeah, holler at the moon, hands down. Oh yeah, that's that's I gotta say that's one of my favorites. I think that's one of my top songs. Yeah, uh, it's just it's just got that vibe to it. You know what I mean? It's just I that. Love it. <laughs> it's yeah. a great vibe. It's one well, of the two. See, I'm 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 drawn between that and photons because photons is like one of my most heartfelt songs that I've ever made too. Mm. That and photons, but the vibe on holler at the moon, bro, is just. <laughs> okay so photons you would say it's like number two basically yeah 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 okay word what's the number three yeah number three temple temple okay yeah word. yeah sweet dude yeah i i love it you i love the singing too I, you kind of surprised me with the singing honestly yeah, <laughs> yeah it was great uh, <laughs> that's the first time i've really like branched out and did that so i appreciate yeah, that bro. that's what i thought like i heard your stuff before i didn't hear stuff like that yeah yeah <laughs> I was great. Yeah, good job. Um, yeah. So, are you gonna be producing a lot more in the future? Are you gonna continue doing? Oh that yeah. Kind of oh yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, for the most part, um, Nia Leo is gonna be on me as well. There's gonna be a couple songs on there that are probably gonna be like instrumental only. Um, that me and Kaisko are gonna do. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. That's sick. You uh, you you think you're gonna put some drums, some natural, like real acoustic drums on there? You think I should? You think I, I should? think it'll be really cool. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I mean, you you played. How long did you play drums for? Um, probably. Phew, I was like eight when I started, and I was like thirteen when I quit. Okay, so, yeah, that's a good five, time though. Yeah. I'm sure, like, if you try to, like, play the drums again, you could still get the hang of it. Yeah, it kind of, it's never kind of leaves you, you know what I mean? I mean, the skill does, but the basics don't. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Right. 
Um, oh, yeah, so, so you mentioned psychedelics on your album. So I was wondering, like, uh, do you have any fa- the most favorable moments and why? On psychedelics? Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a, that's a lifetime. Uh, <laughs> You've been doing it for a good amount of time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have a favorite moment. Um well I have a moment. So this is a trip story, you ready? Okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um I was hanging out with my buddies and uh we were getting ready to smoke some DMT and we had it all up and I go and take the hit and i mean i have i've been in um i've broken through before and you know what i mean dealt with the dmt realm many times before but this one was really special uh so <laughs> so when when i hit this so I'm, i i kind of want to set the vibe so we're like sitting in the room it's me my friend and my girlfriend at the time and they're all kind of like uh like helping me into the trip mm-hmm. like i'm gonna go first you know what i mean and sat right. me down sat down on this bed and we got all the lights right and uh i'm laying there and i'm not expecting what was about to happen to me but this guy my buddy handing me the, the bowl and i go hit it and i do my three first hits you know what i mean and i blow out and it comes on strong I mean, it comes on strong. I mean, bam, I'm in the, I'm just there. You know what I mean? And every, all the fractals wow. are crazy. And um, there's like a bunch of, there's there's a bunch of entities around me, all like chaotic and like kind of like happy, but chaotic at the same time. And when I trip, there's usually this uh, this guide that I have there and he's there and like it's really crazy for me so i'm like trying to um like calm down and trying to like you know what i mean and he's there kind of telling me like hey just let go just let go like just let go and it took a minute for me to get there but once i was like okay like i can't fight this there's nothing i'm gonna be able to do to get you know what i mean i just uh, just let it happen and as soon as i did i mean the whole I, all the entities, every, everything around me just became happy and loving. And it, it, like, I started going through, like, I I would just call it like everything started happening faster. Like, and, um, get this crazy sense of euphoria all over my body. Um, and yeah, and I was just kind of let go and, and and my entities, they're like, see, man, like, see, dude, it's a, everything's cool and everybody's like in the all the entities in the background like yeah man yeah like come on (laughs) and um and i'm just like whoa like this is this is absolutely mind-blowing because like that whole letting go part has never happened to me before and then um like the guide is that like all comes to the thing and like everybody's like all the entities are like, hey, like what's going on? And it all comes kind of comes to like a easier trip for me. And he's like showing me around these different spaces. And I get to this, uh, th- this like, it's weird because it, it almost didn't resemble a DMT realm. Like it almost resembled like it, like something that I would be, I don't know if it was put there so I'd be able to understand it a little mm. bit better or, but it was, uh, I was like in this room and there was a bunch of people there and they were they they it, like it, it felt like I knew everybody, hmm. but like I was really confused. I was like, "Where am I at? Where am I going?" And I see my guy there, and he's like, "Yo, you've been here before." And like I got that feeling of like overwhelming familiarity, and I just started like bawling, crying, and like so happy to see everybody. Like that, it felt like I haven't seen these people in so long. Wow. And then I saw like, and it, it was just, it was just like. And they were all like hugging me and telling me like, hey, like, and um, just even that's like sending like chills up. you just talking about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, and every, it was just like this overwhelming sense of, of familiarity. And um, as soon as like I started to, you know what I mean, realize that like I was in this place where everybody knew me and I was be- like, you you know what I'm saying? It, mm-hmm. As soon as that, the, 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 um, the forgetting started to set on. Oh. And 
I was like, it, it, and I kind of knew that it was like starting to set on because I, I don't know, I, I just knew. And uh, I looked at the the spirit guide and I was like, hey man, I think it like, it's my time to go. Like, I think I gotta go. And they all just like came over to me and gave me a hug and was just like, kind of like, till next time, man, like, we love you. You know what I mean? We'll see you again. And I was like, oh man, I gotta go. You know what I mean? But and I kinda just woke up and, you know, it, it was crazy too, because when I woke up, uh, I remember opening my eyes and I was looking on the ground and everything was still kind of trippy. And uh, I heard like, I heard like what I perceived to be as them like laughing. And I saw this little creature running around on the ground, like a little small creature, like running around on the ground, like happily. And then it just kind of fade away. And like all my sense came back. Wow. It was, like a gift like bye you know what i'm saying like some yeah. little thing you know what i mean like that's the way i interpret <laughs> right wow that's insane so you always have this one particular guide yeah yeah there's the always the one there there's always that guide there for me in the dmt realms like for the most part for the most part there are times where i enter into different spaces i think that uh are not where that entity is if if that makes sense. Mm, so what does the what does the guide usually do? Just help help you relax you kind of Yeah, yeah. It's just usually like relaxing and just like calming down, like just kind of like for me now, just seeing them kind of just lets me know, you know. Yeah. Do you remember like what they look like? Like your guide or the beam? Um vaguely, vaguely. They 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 kind of they, they look like me, kinda. They you know? Really? But um yeah, like so it's it's weird because it, but it's like a thing. It feels, it feels like his face is thinner. Um, got long hair. Mm. Wow. The same color hair as me, dark eyes, you know, brown eyes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like me, bro. Wow. Reflections of you. If it is me. I don't know if it's like my higher self in the DMT realms or I don't, I don't know. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't figured out that information yet, but. <laughs> Did your guide look like you too? Say what? Did your guide look like you too? Um, what do you mean? Like you said, uh, those other beings, they, they look like reflections. No, no, just the guide looked like me. Oh, just the guide looked yeah, like me. Uh, the other beings, uh, they're just kind of, they're random. You know what I mean? They, they, they morph and change. Oh. Your feelings happen, and as the environment changes, you know. Yeah. Wow. So then, after that experience, then you're in a room with people, and yeah, or like maybe not like human, maybe not even like just human. I was just in a room with other souls for mm -hmm. sure. That like they they were definitely humanoid in the the sense to where I could see them, you know, humanoid. Okay. So okay, they look. Like they vaguely look like humans, basically. Yeah, but they, I don't think they all were, you know. Right, right. It's maybe just helping you, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Understand. In that, that it, it gave me to be able to uh, kind of ground myself to the situation. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or else if you seen someone else, like whatever they actually were, it might have like. Yeah, it might have freaked me out a little bit. You yeah, know? right. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think's like the biggest did you figure out like your biggest takeaway from this experience? Um yeah, I think the the letting go part mm. in itself was a really really big because like I said that had never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. And I before that, I mean, I had I had um used DMT in that way uh countless times so, so before that that had never happened to me so i think a big takeaway of that for me was yeah just sometimes you know let go of things you can't control and it might get better for you you know um yeah. that um that it, it that and it was kind of a validation for me that there are there is something else that i've always been thinking that that, that little itch in my brain you know what i, I mean, mean right it's, right right validation like hey like we're here like we exist bro like you know mm -hmm. right yeah so do you, you think that was one of the that was one of the craziest right do you think that was uh one of the biggest like spiritual messages you've gotten to 
Um, yeah, yeah. It's one of the biggest, mm -hmm, for sure. And you think that's, uh, you know, carried over into your life afterwards? Yeah, completely changed my life. Really? It changed your yeah. life? Yeah. Wow. So, because that before that, it was like, like, I know this exists. Mm -hmm. But after it, it was like, I know this exists. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you think in it, let being able to let go, do you think that also like helped you to let go in other circumstances in life? Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely taught me a lot of um, forgiveness mm. and empathy. And empathy? Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, because, yeah, it's cool if like you can have a crazy experience, but like if you can get something like, a, like you know, something deep that you can take with you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, take from that. And that's what it's really about for me. Like, I don't like to use psychedelics in the manner to where we're just going to be like, hey, like, we're going to go on a trip, dude. Let's go, hey, we, we, you know, like, not right. to not anybody who does it. That's just not me. Right, um, right. I, uh, I, I, I kind of go into it for sacred reasons, you know what I mean? Spiritual reasons. Mm -hmm. Right. So you said an intent, basically, that you want to yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Do you still do it? Do you still do psychedelics to this day, or is that... Um, when I'm called to. Yeah, called to. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that that's usually what I hear from a lot of people who who do it for spiritual reasons. They they won't just, like, look, search it out, or just, like, it's like an intuitive feeling, like... Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it definitely just come comes to me, you know what I mean? I don't those those kind of experiences just yeah just kind of come to you you know what i mean and i don't want to self into situations to learn things that i'm not ready for yet if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely yeah so i also want to ask you about lucid dreaming have you ever done that before um yeah yeah um what's crazy about that is aura was actually a big part of that as well um because like I always knew what lucid dreaming was, but I did a little stint in um, in jail for a while. And when I was in there, he sent me this book and it's called, uh, I forget, it's called. Yeah, he mentioned it. When yeah, we the, it. it's like something like the handbook to lucid dreaming or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And um, it's, it, it basically just teaches you uh, how to realize when you're in the state, um, how to you know pick out your dream object and how to you know what i mean just it just lays it all down for you and i got really into it when i was in there and i'd say a couple weeks that i was in there um i was able to get to the point to where i was able to realize that i was dreaming mm -hmm. and i would do something like i would i would because this is my dream object right there Oh, okay that's my dream object so i looked down at my hands in the state. So I'll look down at my hands and I'll see the tattoo on my hand. I'll be like, okay, I'm dreaming. And, um, i will be able to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would always do something like my mind would always try to fly. I would always try mm -hmm. to fly. And I think like, I am just like starting off too much too early. So like, I would always just like raise my hands up. I'm like, okay, I'm dreaming. Like, so I can fly right now. I'll start to fly and you get the falling feeling. And then next right. thing I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Intense. But yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely have gotten there. I just haven't been able to stay in the dream, if that right. makes sense. Right. Have you been able to like continue continue to have lucid dreams after that? Uh yeah, like it happens to me all the time where I'll know that I'm dreaming, but most of the time now I'll go to the it, most of the time when I realize that I'll almost instantly switch into sleep paralysis. Oh really? Yeah, mm. which is kind of crazy because like, um, I have I had my first what I think might be my first astral projection experience just a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, what was that like? So I was laying in bed and like I said, like I popped I popped in to a dream, and I think uh, I popped out of it because I couldn't stay in stay in it, and I'm and I, I'm in this. Um, I'm, I'm in the sleep paralysis mode. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. laying there and I'm awake, but I know I'm sleeping. And uh, I re I've read that book, uh, Journeys Out of the Body by Robert. Hey. 
So I, you yeah. know, I kind of have a little bit of that uh, information and knowledge in there, yeah, and yeah. I, um, I started the vibration technique because, like, you know what I mean. I, I just started focusing on that, and for the first time, I actually got my body to start vibrating, and I got to a point to where the blackness fizzed into like a gray or almost a white, mm. and. The, then I think it kind of scared me and I pulled myself back in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To stop the vibration. Like, but yeah. that's the farthest I've ever gotten was getting to where like the light was kind of changing, if that makes sense. I don't know right. if that happened. No, yeah, you. yeah. Yeah, I've had similar situations like that, but yeah, it freaked you out. <laughs> yeah, definitely just uh, kind of maybe be like, oh, okay, like stop the vibration, you know? <laughs> yeah. You get, you get used to it. You get used to yeah. it. It's intense at first, but like you learn. <laughs> yeah. It's always pretty crazy, honestly. <laughs> I'll, I'm I'm sure I'll take it further the next time. Right. Yeah. yeah. All you do is like you gotta just stay calm. Like that's it. Just stay calm. Yeah. Don't think about <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard at vibration. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a look. A lot of <laughs> right. Like, experience that as well. So yeah. Wow. I think it'll, it, it'll get better with practice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. And you, it's only a few weeks ago you had it, so mm -hmm. there you go. And you weren't even trying to do it, so look at that. No. That's awesome. <laughs> so um, also, I'd like to ask you, are there any books that you have been reading or have any favorite books? Um, my, I mean, I, my favorite books would um, be The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life for sure. All three of this, uh, I believe there's three volumes to it. Oh, okay, you know, I never read about, that. No, nah. um, I'll have to link it to you. It's a really good book. It, 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 it's a three series, three different series. It's like um, from one of the students of Ram Das, ah. and he like breaks in it down like the origin of the planet and our species and aliens and where that all came from, and then it goes into the sacred ge uh, sacred geometry, like explaining all that side, mm. and really knowledgeable really um science back book as well so it's like for it, it, it's good for people getting into the realm you mm -hmm. know what i mean right gotcha yeah yeah that uh, would probably be my favorite the ancient the ancient secrets of the flower of life okay do you know the author or no i can look him up right now hold on <laughs> i have i have to read that book honestly that sounds really good Okay. Yeah, Drunvalo Melchizedek. Drunvalo oh, <laughs> Melchizedek. I hope I'm... Yeah, that sounds like a tough name. I'll just look up the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do you have any... Do you have any biggest music inspirations now? Um, Dude, lately... uh. I've been really inspired by like Tosh Altana. Tosh Altana has been like a really big uh, inspiration of mine as of lately. Oh, yeah. It's kind of I've been listening to. <laughs> I'm not really that familiar with. She, she, she's an artist from uh, Australia who like, uh, she's like a one man band kind of thing, but she's she does like reggae music with, um, you ever heard, you ever seen those loop stations? The Boss Ars, or Ars yeah, the Boss RC505 loop stations. Um, maybe. <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the beat maker or beatboxers use them. Um, but she kind of hooks all her equipment up to this looper. Okay. Oh, yeah, she kind of click uh, hooks all her equipment up to this looper and plays it, and she just man, she makes some great, amazing music. Oh, Breathtaking. Okay. Toss. Check, check her out, bro. She's cool. All right, sweet, sweet. And is there anything else you want to let people know before we sign off? Anything they should check out? Um, yeah. Uh, go check out the Oracle album, of course. That's that's streaming everywhere. You can go on the YouTube. Um, and there will be a video for Demi Urge dropping soon. Oh, okay. That, that's, that's a, a banger. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the energetic single on the album. So there'll be a video coming for that uh, real soon. And yeah, just keep an eye out for Neo Leo coming soon, man. Word. And I, I want to ask one more thing. <laughs> Actually, that I just yes, thought right now. <laughs> it, what's one thing that you are obsessed about right now? It could be anything. One thing that I'm obsessed about. Yeah. 
Hmm. <laughs> I mean, dude, I don't really do anything but sit in here and make beats, bro. Like, if, and write music. So I think make beats, bro. That's awesome. Sounds yeah, it's for me, bro. I, I, I like to find new sounds and, you know, experiment with stuff too. So experimenting with sounds, I'm kind of, yeah, stuck in it right now. Hey, awesome. All right, perfect, bro. Yeah, well, man. Thanks so much for joining on to the podcast, bro. Great speaking with you. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. And I'll let you know when this drops. But till next time, thank you so much. Have a All great right. rest of your day. Stay healthy, man. Have a good one. You too, brother. Peace. Oh, please keep your mind at ease. It's obvious.